<laughs> so welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending April 24th, 2021. All the big news stories, and we're going to start out, as we so often do, with Evangelion. Mm. Um, the final Evangelion film sold 5 million tickets in 42 days. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And how's that compare to uh, Mugen Train in um, 42 days? I do not have numbers for Mugen Train. Um, I do know Mugen that um, um, it surpassed the domestic earnings of the previous Evangelion film by its third week. Wow. So it made more, more, more money in, its, in three weeks than Eva 3.0 made. Eva's picking wow. up the momentum. Sure is. Uh, totally. Might be threatening the Mugen Train domination. Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, it is now the highest earning Eva film domestically and internationally, despite only ever having aired in Japan so far. Wow. To give you an idea. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Doing fine. Yeah. Um, it was also, it also has the highest IMAX earnings on our opening day in Japan. We reported on that mm. I believe right. last week, the week before. IMAX. Oh, my. Yeah. I see it Can in you IMAX. you imagine an EVA film in IMAX? I think you're Yeah. Really that would be uh, slightly <laughs> insane. <laughs> Um, yeah, IMAX was 10% of the film's opening day gross. Wow. Uh, where it's normally like 1% to 2%. Wow. Um, so that's pretty nuts uh, that we got something that uh, high end on that. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it definitely did very, very, very well. Now, my question is, again, kind of that, that Mugen Train question. And it's a little unfair. It's kind of like, you know, every movie has to be as successful as Titanic. Um, but... Um, and, you know, is Eva something that can be as successful as Mugen Train? Well, I mean, given the, the legs that Eva has, I mean, yeah. you know, Mugen Train is his relative newcomer yeah. by comparison. So uh, the depth of Eva popularity? Oh, I, yeah. uh, that's a good song chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how many generations of anime fans have been able to enjoy Eva, so. Yeah, yeah. It's a ninety-five and, show, so it's been around for what, twenty-five years now. Yeah, yeah. and it's like Kimetsu no Yaiba. It's a it's relative newcomer by comparison. So, and it did insanely well. Yeah. And you know? in, in fairness, and of course, it's at the front of people's minds versus right. Eva. But you know, Eva's a slow burn. I mean, and, and and sometimes being fresh is its own advantage. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's some folks who are like Eva. No, never. <laughs> um, right. You know, I've I've done that thing, but I don't know. Um, um, it's it's hard to say. Um, this was also um, after the delay, so they delayed by a couple of months because of the COVID thing. Right. Um, so that may have helped as well, where they're kind of building up, you know, more yeah. and more uh, interest. Wow. We've just been just just cranking out uh, the promotional materials. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. See Eva, see Eva now, <laughs> see the Eva train. <laughs> please, <laughs> like, oh. please. But you know, people people are exhausting stuff on the regular uh, cha- you know channels, say you know Netflix and mm-hmm. places like that. There were questions: Hey, are they running out of material? Where's right. where's new content going to come from? Where mm-hmm. people have spent so much time binging that they've like started to deplete yeah. the unusual stuff and gotten into other things that may not be as satisfying or the genre mm-hmm. that they like mm-hmm. and. Uh, I have a friend who who's who's not thrilled with um, uh, Netflix uh, original specials, uh, oh. but okay. I found a lot of them that I really like. So uh, sure. uh, being able to go to the theater, yeah, especially yeah. On IMAX. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, anime. <laughs> well, and especially sp- speaking of Netflix, you know, I think Netflix bringing on licensing Evangelion was it last year um, was also a boost for the franchise internationally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now a lot of North American folks were like, "Oh, I've heard of this Eva thing." Oh, Finally, there it is. I got a chance yeah. to look yeah, at it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that'll definitely that definitely goosed it a little bit. Um, so of course, then now that you know the Harmony Gold issues uh, been all been all wrapped right. up, they're going to just push Eva out of the way for Macross. Right. Yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah. Macross. Um, about that. Um, <laughs> uh, about we'll, that. We'll, we'll see. Um, that was all an April Fool's Fool's yeah. joke. <laughs> oh, you suck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm going to be fascinated to see what Macross's next next project is. Whatever that is, yeah. that's, oh boy. Um, but let's continue with the mo- anime movie news. Um, it was announced this week that, um, uh, well, a casting call went out this week for Mamoru Hosoda's next film for singing extras, and the call went out globally. The hills are alive. Yeah, 
yes. Um, so there's a scene. What the... did we learn on the show <laughs> oh, tonight, yeah. Brad? There's there's our demo reel right there. Aha. Um, <laughs> there's a pivotal scene in the in the film where if you've seen a more Hosoda film, you'll recognize it. Um, mm. Where apparently everyone in the world comes together to to sing and to support the main character. Um, so I'd like to yes. teach the world to sing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> um, and so they're, they're going to have um, you know you're going to hear a whole bunch of different people singing around the world. And so they're putting out uh, they put out a page where applicants can submit vocal recordings of the melody. Um, it's just like a la 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 kind of vocal. Um, and uh, you can you can submit that wherever you are in the world anywhere. There's no you don't have to be in Japan. Anything, anywhere can submit that. You hear that, fans? Yeah. You might end up in Bell, Mamoru Hosoda's next film. Which, of course, as soon as they announce that, they got, like, 300 million applicants. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to like... IMDb. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, do we have enough server space to, for all the people <laughs> to apply? Oh, it's fine. We've got, like, you know, a, an Amazon data center worth of... Oh, it's yeah. fine. What? Exactly. <laughs> Gonna have to. <laughs> Ten seconds of show and the rest is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, like, wow. Uh, um, so, yeah, and, and um, to be clear, um, it is an application. So it's not like everybody who submits will get in. Um, but, yes, they're, they're accepting applicants from all over the world for this, which I think is pretty darn cool for something like this, where, again, you know, you're not asking for... Um, yeah, I think if they tried to do this for, like, a, a voice role, even if it's just like one line. You know, <laughs> yeah. Can, can you imagine being the person who got those thirty-eight thousand submissions, then having to filter through all of those global Next, 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 next. With this, you can just you know listen to all those and then combine them all together, which is pretty cool. Um, that, that one one work. giant Hatsune Miku um, right. blur <laughs> digitize everything. Somebody can recognize it. Just run it. Yeah. I'm trying to understand, um, though, like, um, let me ask this. How much of a marketing stunt do you think this is? Hmm. Um, enormous? Okay, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, I because, like, because that, again, you, mean, you do have yeah. literally the, uh, the chance. I mean, there's almost 7 billion humans on this planet, <laughs> and a good, good quantity of them have access to the, you know, ability to submit this information mm-hmm. so just conservatively say 500 million people have decent access where they can submit a voice sample mm-hmm. yeah out of those 500 million people maybe a hundred million might be in the target area that could send it or mm-hmm. just say 50 million right. All the buzz. 50 million la, 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 you know <laughs> Like, that's an enormous amount of yeah. data. They're going <laughs> like, to need AI yeah. well, just to process I mean, it. I, I, I mean, I, so I, I, it's not a pra- – I don't think it's a practical, like, functional thing. It is entirely to get the world behind it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's it's it, 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 just the masses of data. It, yeah. It, they're yeah. going to have to come up with some sort of an algorithm to process all that because otherwise they're going to have to hire extra staff take away from the budget of the, mm. uh, of the program. So, yeah, the, mm-hmm. but – Buzz about uh, program is yeah. free publicity and absolutely yep, totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah. everybody um, will be talking about. I submitted my my la la la's and yeah. here we go. Um, Don't submit anything. <laughs> I'll submit it for you. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and to to be clear, you know, this could very well be one of those things where you know at some point they'll just stop it. Um, yeah. You know, the, once they get a certain number, they'll just say, okay, you know, thank you. We have four hundred thousand yeah. people. <laughs> So who knows? We've got the three people we're interested in. Stop <laughs> sending us stuff. Speak, speaking of, um, this is not related at all, um, but I remember when um, Haruhi Suzumiya was being brought over here. Um, they did a, a very remarkable thing, which I wish more companies would do, because Haruhi was the big show of the, yeah. the time. Um, yeah. And bring it over here, there's a lot of worry about how it would be adapted. Mm-hmm. And the folks who were adapting it said, we're going to, you know, we, we, under, we, we understand everyone's respect for this show. And so they would do things like, well, one of the things they did is they released sample clips of the various auditions for the characters. Ooh. And you could listen to three different clips and then vote on which one you thought was the best wow. Mikuru Asahina or the best Yuki Nagato. And, okay. they, and then they would you know, pull that in and say, obviously this is you know, not the only data point we have, but we're going to you know, make that as kind of part of our, our consideration. Um, and that was really cool. And they, as I recall, they they um, they released them 
um, initially without attribution, and then later said, here's who is doing, you know, here's the voice actor for each of these. So yeah. folks wouldn't be, you know, um, 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 swayed one way or the other. You know, um, that, that, that really makes the casting director's job that much easier because yeah. they don't really get direct feedback until a project is finished. Right. And, you know, that cycle of getting quick feedback of, hey, the people's choice leans in this direction. Mm -hmm. My thoughts were, okay, these are the best three, but which of these three I'm not sure. Right. You know, it completely makes sense to have something like that in the process just for marketing mm -hmm. purposes. Because yeah. exactly. if, if, if a voice actor is inappropriately cast, it could just destroy a really good anime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and it's nice for something, something like that where you may make a choice for all the right reasons, but um, the fandom can make you aware of things that you're not even aware of mm -hmm. around how folks expect a voice to be, things along those lines. Right. So, Again, I think so. Well, well, well. Here's here's a here's a good question. Mm -hmm. I I listen to things in subtitle land, sure. so yeah. I don't I hear what the original Japanese, the Japanese cast is. Yeah. I've never really heard a voice actor terribly doing a character that I can remember. Okay. Either Japanese oh, or in boy. English. Oh, what boy. is the worst <laughs> that you guys have ever heard? See, this is this is the problem. We talked about this before. The problem is. If I hear a dub I don't like, I just switch it off. You know, if I hear something I don't like, I just switch to something okay. else. So I, okay. I don't, you know, I don't sit in a voice I don't like. Um, well, but has there been one where you, where your expectation, what you were saying, is like your expectation this, of what the character should sound like, that either in Japanese or in English, that you heard it and you were like, oh no, 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 that's just, oh, that's just not, that's not good. Uh, Does any I'm, come I'm to mind gonna, particularly? I'm not going to point any fingers, but I have had experiences <laughs> where certain voice acting uh, roles, and it's not always the voice actor's fault. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, they've been put in a position where they're really not appropriate. They'd be better for one of the other characters or something. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. um, or, or they've been hired under the expectation that they'll be able to do something, but then the direction takes it in another, mm -hmm. in another way. And sometimes there are certain character voice qualities that mm. are grating on the nerves yeah. or they're okay. not like an age appropriate um, yeah. for the character or... Okay. Um, I own each <laughs> Yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's, it's like poetry. You learn the rules so mm -hmm. you know what rules sure. to break. Mm -hmm. And right. one, of the, one, of, one of the ones that I really like um, is not an anime, but Venture Brothers... Um, okay. uh, 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 Dr. Girlfriend speaks with a voice like mm. that. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's your problem, Monarch? And, and she's this hot chick, you mm -hmm. know, bikini babe, but she's yep. got that guy's voice mm -hmm. that's really low. And, uh, you know... I have, a, I have a question for you. Yes, I am a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and it just breaks all the rules sure. in the right Absolutely. way. So right. sometimes it can be done, but, you know, sometimes it detracts from the story. And everything should add to the narrative. Yeah. Right. And the illusion of, I'm in this story. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I have one, and people are going to kill me for it. Um, it it's, it's, it's heresy. Utter, utter heresy. I can't stand the male voice of Ranma in Ranma and Half in the Japanese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. oh. It just sounds, it sounds like a, a woman... Trying to trying desperately to do a man's voice to my ears. You okay. Know, you know. I switched over to the English dubs early mm -hmm. on, and so I didn't yeah. I didn't notice. But I've I've seen other other yeah. male women women playing boys, and I'm like, mm -hmm. that's that's not a young boy. Yeah, it, it, it sounded <laughs> really. Yeah. Sometimes awesome. they're really good at it. Sometimes it's just. Well, and but I don't mean to pick on ghost yeah. stories, but in Japanese with yeah. with subtitles, mm -hmm. the little brother. Mm -hmm. In ghost stories, mm. his voice is like fingernails on a blackboard. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. And, it and it's like, the... but yeah. it's you know, Which but it's just... a it's appropriate for the kid's character. Right. So it's like it, it's not. It's not. I don't hate it because it's mm. discordant with the actual right. what I'm expecting oh, okay. of the character. Yeah. It's just the voice itself is terrible. Yeah. It's like I can't think of too many where it's like I've had that where I'm like <laughs> looking at a character, I'm listening to the voice, being like, wow, that just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 This was one of those for me. And by yeah. the way, I think it's one of the reasons why the the voice actor for that kid in Ghost Stories in English just plays him as. 
you know, it's for yeah. half of his ro- half of his lines. Yeah, that is kind of the joke. Um, but um, yeah, also, um, um, I'm not a huge fan of um, um, the American voice actor for um, Amaro Ray, uh, an original Mobile Suit Gundam. He's fine. Oh. He's huh. he, he's fine. Um, and I will say, for the first like ten episodes or so. Um, he's just a little bit too um, annoying teenager, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, grating voice, annoying teenager, and I think he he found his balance later on as, as you know for for that role. Um, but it just it just he's doing the ah I'm <laughs> a lot, which doesn't really fit the. The character, as I see it in like the Japanese versions, right. and so on, right? Um, well, okay. It's only there, but it's not as as high up, right? Um, stuff along, along those lines. Um, a number yeah. of folks in the chat rooms have yeah. uh, particular ones yeah. that uh... Goku in Japanese is weird for me. When I hear the, the Japanese Goku, uh, it, it's played by a woman, um, legendary voice actress, um, and I think it's one of the things where probably like so many things, if you grew up with it in Japan, that's just Goku's voice. Right, but when right. we hear it, like, oh, that's a, that's a take that I just wouldn't, <laughs> you know, imagine. Um, um, for, yeah. for, for me, some, some of the funny things are when oh, I first... Oh, sorry, go, ahead, no, go, ahead, go for go it. Ahead. I, of course I have the canonical example. Oh. <laughs> um, 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 wait, I, I need to make sure I have the right... Um, just, just verifying... For yes. accuracy, um, before you um, throw the dart. <laughs> that's there. We go. Um, General Septim from Gundam Wing. General Septim. General Septim. Like a deviated his, Septim. His is, I was about to say he was a deviant, wasn't he? Is a deviated Septim. Septim. Um, and I, I, I suggest if you Google Gundam Wing General Septim, the second entry <laughs> is a YouTube video called "The Voice of General Septim," which gives you an idea. Every time I re- hear this voice, I don't think it's going to be as bad as it is, <laughs> and it's worse. And I think, given what's all go- how what? I have um, um, clipped up, I can actually, you can actually hear this because of our audio thing. So we'll see how much of this we can get, uh, we can get away with. I'm gonna play a little clip Your of this. Your point being, you wasted three mobile suits just to bring a minor rebellion under control. <laughs> that is his voice. <laughs> it is. It is this voice the entire time. That is General Septim. Oh, it and doesn't just, vary. No, that is his oh, voice the no, entire no, no. show. Wow. Have, have, it's, moving into that one. Wow. No, no, that is always talk that, about that. that is his voice. It's a yeah. Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah, exactly. It's the and Gilbert Godfrey general. Clear, this is one of the more important, pivotal characters. He's not there for a huge mm. long time, but he is. He is a major plot point. In this thing, played completely straight in the Japanese. Are you sure it wasn't a general plot point? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, you know, he comes on and you just go. I can't take this man seriously. <laughs> and as a result, we were able to prevent the rebellion from developing into anything. I'm not talking about the results. You're a. <laughs> I feel like a Monty Python sketch. Yeah, yeah kind of. <laughs> Oh, it's man. tremendously terrible. Um, <laughs> what do I say? You know, wow. You could invite in the janitor passing in, in the hallway, and it would be better than this person. I don't know why. Could have been directing, maybe. Could have been. I don't know. I, I was gonna say, who would be directing it that way, though? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who heard that and said, "Good. Yeah, go go with that one." You know. Let them take care of this one. Yeah. Um, take 315, just whatever voice. <laughs> just any voice. It Go. was the popular vote. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> what, what was that boat that got named by the general oh, yeah. public? Oh, Bodie Bo- McBoatface. Bo- <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Um, <laughs> moving right along. Um, yes, to, back to the news, sorry. Back to the news, back to the news. Um... Um, also in anime movie news, it's kind of a, a fun thing to note, uh, G-Kids have announced they're going to be re-releasing some anime films in U.S. theaters. 
Um, so bring some stuff back to U.S. theaters. Um, they'll be showing Children of the Sea June 13th and 15th. Uh, Weathering with You uh, mm -hmm. in July. Lupin the Third, the first. The third or the third? The, uh, the, yes. The third, the first. Yes, yes. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, Promare. Um, so June, July, August, okay. September, basically. Oh, wow. We're going to have films. a cavalcade of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to be really awesome. Um, so I need to see Promare. I never get to see Same here. Um, so that's really cool. Um, um, they'll be um, in theaters in the U.S., um, basically one night only for each one. There'll be one night for the dub, one night for the sub. So, you know, you can choose. Let me guess, people. Wednesday and Thursday nights. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because that's what they like to do to me. <laughs> um, tickets will go on sale May 14th. So you have a little ways to, to wait as everything will, will uh, uh, chug along. On my um, birthday. What, 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 what yeah. anime were those again? Uh, Children of the Sea, uh, Weathering with awesome. You, Lupin the Third, the First, and Promare are those four movies. And... Uh, Lupin the Third, the first. I'm trying to remember now actually what that is. This is the new CGI Lupin the Third, oh. uh, which people seem to really like the uh, the overall sort of visual style of that. Um, so uh, yeah, that is a that is a thing that will be out there. And uh, cool. Weathering with You is gonna, it's kind of interesting because that was definitely a big deal when it came out. Um, yeah, Curtis and Kai's latest film. So big news. Um, uh, and no news on like how widespread it is. So just FYI. Um, Coming yeah. soon to a theater. Right, yeah. <laughs> maybe near in Los maybe Angeles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Plane trip. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so that's Coming cool. to an art house theater in Spokane, Washington. Mm -hmm. That's how I saw Spirit Away. When Spirit Away came out, really? it was in a local art house uh, theater. Cool. In Spokane, yeah. Washington? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. It probably was. It was a long but, drive. Uh, yeah. Um, so I Wait a minute. If I'm, all, if I'm on a roll, the lottery numbers will be. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my pen? I gotta write this down. Um, also, speaking of um, movie news, um, Crunchyroll has announced a Crunchyroll movie night program um, coming for the UK and Ireland. Um, so basically, what they're gonna do, it sounds like, is they're gonna have a like a movie night page. Go to that page, and on May first, that page will show Penguin Highway, the anime film. Um, June 1st, it will change to Patima Inverted. Mm -hmm. And then July 1st, it will change to another movie. So basically, they'll have kind of this rotating thing where there's this one movie they're featuring at any given time, and they'll, you'll be able to watch that movie you know, whenever you want throughout the course of the month, and they'll rotate it to a different movie. Is that only in UK and Ireland? Only in UK and Ireland right now. Yeah. Um, Where's um, my onion router? Yeah, I know. Destination <laughs> port? Exactly. <laughs> Um, and so I wanted to bring it up here as opposed to just be in um, uh, also this week because I think it's interesting, A, uh, focusing this on uh, UK and Ireland. I'm sure these are, you know, licensing rights where we can only show it in certain areas and this right. isn't an easy, easy spot. But also this idea of a sort of a rotating movie um, thing. Like, is this something you'd like to see Crunchyroll do more yeah. often? Yeah, because Give them feedback. Let it, them know. We want it here in the U.S. Because, I mean, <laughs> it's only there for a month, right? It's not you yeah. have access for the next three years. You only have access briefly, but you have that access. And in the well, it's kind of nice yeah. to have that, because yeah. for those of us who don't have Netflix, yeah. right. that, you know, to have uh, the Crunchy movie of the month, is, mm -hmm. would that be Fine. I think that you know doesn't add too much to the to the catalog, at least as far as you know trying to store that thing forever right. and yeah. forever. And it gives um, more flexibility than trying to be uh, in a theater on Wednesday or Thursday yeah. on a specific date. Mm -hmm. right. You can right. actually get a few friends together and watch a movie on Friday night. Mm -hmm. which, speaking of which, I would lo I would love to live in a technologically advanced society wherein the movie projectors, like our art house, actually have a DVD drawer. Which mm. stunned the living hoo-ha out of me. I didn't think a yeah. thing like that could exist. Mm -hmm. But when they did a free show of Labyrinth, the oh, yeah. DVD menu screen <laughs> came up. Like, like what, so how are you doing this? But I would love to live in a, a future where Crunchyroll could say, hey, you know, AMC Theaters. HDMI into, you know, somebody's cell phone. We'll give you the license <laughs> to show Promari. Mm -hmm. And then just stream Promari through the HDMI cable into yeah. the projector and show it on the screen once a month. Yeah. Come join Simp Thieves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I suspect that's more a problem with the movie theaters, right? Like, yeah, I, I have no doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think that logically you're just you know, convincing the movie theaters to show anime, an anime film. That. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, it would be neat to have a world yeah, like that totally. where it would be like, you know, 
the companies could reach out to these places and be like, yeah, just hook this thing up and have a movie night. And it should do be that thing. Out, if, if folks are curious about this, you can rent out movie theaters. So if you wanted to do this on your own, you can absolutely do this yourself. Um, and they have like those DVD Blu-ray hookups where they'll, they'll say, if you want to, you can go in and say, you know, we're going to rent the movie theater, we're going to bring our disc of whatever, plop that in and show it. Just so, be careful and check movies. with your lawyers before you invite people you don't know. Right, <laughs> yes. And make sure it's a, Public you know, viewing. Uh, Public private viewing. They will, they will be aware of all that. Um, or they, 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 will, they will check up on that. You're absolutely right. <laughs> um, the other cool thing about this is they're showing... Um, um, Movies like Giovanni's Island and My My Miracle, sort of more family-friendly uh, films. But then January through April, it's all going to be Makoto Shinkai films. Um, mm -hmm. So it's five centimeters per second, yeah. Your Name, uh, wow. Children of Chase Lost Voices, and then Place Promised for wow. the, wow. those films. So if you want to ch uh, uh, catch up on your, your stuff next year <laughs> for Makoto Shinkai, um, that Head is to the UK and Ireland. UK and Ireland. <laughs> Um, that is your option. So nice. interesting idea. And I, again, I, I agree. I, I really like the the idea of the program. Um, yeah. Let's see them do, do more of that. I wonder if at Blarney Castle they're going to set up a, a large Ooh. format projector. People are going to be Ooh. kissing the place while like your name's <laughs> showing in the background. <laughs> cool. <laughs> of all the things I could kiss, <laughs> a stone that millions of other people have kissed for some reason does not. Uh, appeal to me in the age of COVID, but... do they wipe it down? Yeah, that's a good question. No, yeah. this is called herd immunity. If everybody just licks the stone, uh, everybody's yeah. immune from everything. It's fine. <laughs> no problem. Cold sores don't mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not an anime uh, news story. It's a manga story, but I thought it was interesting and, and worth mentioning. So ICV2, a, a big media news site, reported this week that according to NB, NBD BookScan, um, uh, the first quarter of 2021 showed a 29% increase in print book sales in the U.S. Wow. Wow. The highest volume um, in the first quarter since BookScan began tracking in 2004. Wow. There was a large growth in the category of graphic novels, mm -hmm. up 4 million from the first quarter of 2020. Wow. And 80% of that growth was in manga. See what the American population do when we have free time exactly on our Exactly right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've been doing that. <laughs> we um, consume. Ah. Exactly. Um, manga, manga, manga. Um, uh, All those Siberian fun. forests and Canadian forests <laughs> falling rapidly to manga production. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, uh, the vice president of hosting sales, excuse me, at Viz, uh, has already stated that uh, they saw a 70% growth in the U.S. market in 2020. Um, which is in line with a 43% increase in overall manga sales in the U.S. that year, despite the ongoing COVID pandemic. So here's my question. Why is, you know, in a year when people are, are reading more stuff, why is manga outpacing American comics in the U.S.? Mm. Like, what is the appeal Because of it's the different. But, you, you know, know, I, I think right. manga provides a lot of... Uh, different characters and different stuff it's not superhero stuff necessarily right but it, it's um but I, I would argue that difference is not what sells i have not right? seen but it, during the time books. of covid where we're all you know we've been spending a lot of time indoors mm -hmm. it's you know what i mean if if you've caught up on the spider-man oh I see comic yeah. book I, and you've totally caught up on the yeah. latest iteration of batman or You're superman right. it's like yeah. okay i can read an american comic book in like Nothing flat. <laughs> it's true. I, I, so if I had a stack of 50 of them, I'd be done by like day two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so what do I do? I go and say, well, I don't know anything about One Punch Man, but I mean, it's a superhero. I like I like Superman. So chip, 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 I'll buy that. I, I, I think a lot of that has to do with also the form factor. American yeah. comic books are thin. You never see them like at libraries. Mm. I see shelves and shelves yeah, of manga true. at our local libraries. Mm. So it's something that kids can get into, and then when they have their own disposable income, will actually buy. Right. Where with the comics, you've got to have a friend who's going to take you to the comic store, or you have to have a subscription, or you have to like pick it up at the local. My my local librarian talked about this at, at one point. Quickie Mart. Yeah. <laughs> one of the problems. With, Quickie Mart. With, uh, um, or Family Mart, as we saw today. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, American comics love these like oversized editions. Uh, right. Like these really big things, uh -huh. which are hard for libraries to shelf. Mm. Um, I know the librarian was talking about this, where he said the nice, the nice thing about manga is, again, they're, you know, they're, they're this size, 
So just you a can fit that in any yeah. given shelf, yeah. and you're good to go. So yeah, right. um, and they do fill the teen section too. Yeah, they absolutely do. <laughs> Sometimes, and like bound, you know, manga volumes don't fold like yeah. a, like an exactly. American issues. comic book does. Totally. I like yeah. the collected. Uh, uh, comic yeah. stories, yeah. Uh, the, you know, like Marvel volume has... one, which is issue one through mm, like, like ninety five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's got some trades down there, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you know, because that's a brilliant point. You're, you're absolutely right that I think manga is filling the niche, if you will. Yeah. Um, now, what does that mean when? All the doors are open and everybody gets yeah. to go out back outside and be like, "Ooh, sunlight!" <laughs> you know. What's that glowing ball in the sky? <laughs> Is it the impending doom? No, it's the sun. Oh, <laughs> what is the nighttime ball? That's less hot. That's the. Oh and, my goodness! You people need to get out there. Charlie, I think you actually have a great point. There is a lot of of uh, um, controversy around American comics and like what is you know appropriate, what isn't appropriate, what's what's. You know, sufficiently, um, um, uh, you know, politically correct and so forth. And I think there are some people who, who, either turn away from from that, uh, just because of the drama. They, they don't want to do the drama, or they're like, okay, I can't read that. I can't read that. I can't read that. But the manga, I'm at least unaware of the controversies around the manga, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Um, True too. So you can you can kind of turn to that for to, for sort of a a, 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 um, a space away yeah. from that. Um, so who knows? Um, uh, and and that's a good point, John. I mean, uh, too, and then also like sharing collections is, is also become a, a big thing online. It's a great, it's a great point. Um, so yeah, which I should probably do at some point. That's a that's a good point. Um, and then uh, did we also want to mention? So yeah, so also in kind of manga news, but again, just kind of an interesting thing. Um, Go Nagai is drawing a new chapter in a in, in a Samu Tezuka manga. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. I see that like Anime News Network. I'm like, oh, who would the... What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, so if they're not familiar, Samu Tezuka, Astro Boy, Dororo, <laughs> all sorts of you know legendary manga and anime creations. Single-handedly made berets popular in Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and robots, basically. If, yeah, um, really. Uh, Go Nagai, Mazinger Z, Get a Robo, um, all, you know, all the classic... Um, uh, mecha series of the 70s. Founding really, father of... <laughs> absolutely. Um, Devilman. Uh, he's a Devilman Crybaby. That's based on his work. Um, yeah. So think blood, action, guts, boobs, <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. Very much his thing. He's A... Adult situations. Very much adult situations. Um, <laughs> this is a man who debuted as a manga artist in 1967... Yeah. Who is going to be doing drawing another? They, they did clarify in the ANN article. I like. Um, um, let's see here, um, uh, Nagai and his company will be drawing a new chapter. So <laughs> he will have assistance on hand. There's more rough. Sure. Yeah. yeah, you guys flesh it out. Exactly. Um, but that's really cool. Um, One pencil line across the page. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's my character arc. You fill it well, out. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, like you know, um, that's the thing about Osamu Tezuka is that at, there was a point at the end where he was producing these huge amounts of things. He would draw the face, pass it off. Like, that was the <laughs> only the thing he was fill drawing. Fill everything every else. single <laughs> frame. It's like, wow. Is this supposed to go on an ant or a <laughs> yeah. giant Michelin man or? <laughs> and he had just these dozens of assistants. That he'd pass all this work off. So yeah, yeah. fair enough. It could go on anything you like as long as it's done by Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's Dry, Wednesday. Dry, I don't care. Friday, <laughs> we're going live. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. that is very much the thing in uh, in in manga. Um, and so, um, apparently it's a story about, um, uh, it's a story about a writer, um, and sort of his muse and sort of creative process. Um, it is a, uh, two volume, 222 page story. Um, so not a huge long thing. Um, so it sounds like something that is conducive to, you know, here's a whole bunch of stuff. I can sort of add an extra little bit, an extra little twist on it at the end, whatever. Mm-hmm. And kind of add to that, especially being about somebody um, struggling artistically. There's certainly plenty of fertile ground there. Is it Le Petit Barbara? Um, um, mine just, I, I'm only familiar with Barbara as a name of it. The um, little Barbara in, I don't know what a faux is. Faux? Um, it's usually Fox? fake I don't know. in, uh, in yeah. French. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I'm only familiar with it as, as Barbara from Tetsuka, but I don't know. I mean, certainly things have weird names. Um, 
But um, yes, so that is that is the thing that's going to happen. And and it, so here's my question to you all: um, what what kind of stories would you like to see get this treatment? Like, what do you think would benefit from a um, a a another chapter, not necessarily even an ending chapter, but an, another chapter from a different creator now that it's been out? Causing no stigma. Okay. The stigma of the wind. Okay. Because the, uh, the anime, the manga, the, the creative artist, I can't remember their name, they passed. Oh. And it, the oh. story never ended. Mm -hmm. And yeah. nobody's ever gone back to like try and piece together any kind of notes or anything so the manga came to an end the anime stopped <laughs> no end mm -hmm. so i'd like to see an ending somebody please sure sure Charm that's what immediately blood. comes to my mind mm -hmm. <laughs> moonlight mile oh <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh unfinished uh, uh anime got to the end of it and I guess ran out of money and support mm -hmm. and it was an interesting story and it could definitely be fleshed out by um, uh, some 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 good artists mm -hmm. and uh, writers and I'd yeah. love to see that mm -hmm. of course I'd also like to see Neuromancer which is oh. been in Hollywood bouncing around for years mm -hmm. to try and get an animation William Gibson's Neuromancer and yeah. Um, but that's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it may not be something that would end up in, in, uh, the Japanese, uh, anime or manga, um, mm. machine. Right. It, right. It, it may be, uh, uh, something that would be a world anime, mm -hmm. but I think it would definitely have interest because yeah. of the, uh, subjects relating to technologies that have, since the story was written, become almost realities. Uh, mm, even though yeah. the implementation is not the same, some of the technologies have developed to the point where mm. they could be um, thought about in by mo uh, by a wider audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, Captain Laser Eyes, your absolutely Satoshi right. Kon's opus, opus. Uh, which you talked about here a little while back, is uh, mm. uh, his is Satoshi Kon's unfinished manga. Yeah. It's basically. Think of a Satoshi Kon film in manga form. It's basically that the guy gets manga Kage gets stuck into his own manga, and you know, very meta, and it, he never finished it. And I would love to see. And it's a good example of something where like it's building up to a big ending, and then he just, it kind of stops, and he said, "I'll get back to it eventually." He never did. And it's something that you could you could very easily say, "Okay, you know, here's a chapter or two, just kind of tying up some of these plot lines. Yeah. Maybe maybe taking it in a completely different direction. It, it's you know, it's it's so meta you can do that easily, right? I think." So, um, yeah, Serge Cohn's last movie project, if they can please finish that up someday, that would be awesome. Um, uh, and hopefully, it sounds like we are getting Despera soon. So that, that, that is a wish of mine that is, uh, that uh, hopefully we will, we will get sometime soon. Um, anyway. Ooh. Also this week. <laughs> Just some news items we wanted to mention, not necessarily dive into it in any great detail, but perhaps we will, we'll see. Um, Irig and the Witch uh, was has been delayed theatrically in Japan due to, of course, COVID-19. Um, it uh, was going to open in April 29th, a uh, new opening date is not yet scheduled. Uh, so that will be coming out in a, a little bit later than, than hoped. Um, it was um, shown at Cannes, I think, early in, in, in the... Uh, the film thing. festival, Cannes. Yeah, I, I think it was shown in Cannes, but anyway. Um, yeah. This was hilarious. Moto Hagio um, has been re-nominated for an Eisner Hall of Fame <laughs> nod. Wow. Um, Moto Hagio, wow. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, big shoujo manga art artist, you know, legendary. Mm -hmm. Um was put in, uh, I believe it was last year, didn't get it, and so they're just putting her in immediately again. <laughs> like, all right, you know, big, big deal, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, she's going up against Neil Gaiman, um, uh, and Scott McCloud, Grant Morrison, and other like very notable people, so mm -hmm. it's tough competition, but here's hoping uh, Moto Hagio, good luck. Um, the Ghibli Museum um, will um, also be uh, closing uh, briefly, uh, again, due to COVID-19, 
Um, uh, it sounds like it's just going to be for, uh, let me just double check, it's gonna, just going to be a couple of weeks, so April 29th, 25th through May 11th. Uh, it's going to close just because, you know, got some, some state of emergency stuff going on, but no big deal. Better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry, absolutely. They're going to sanitize the lumen hoo-ha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with the, you know, <laughs> that giant, Light scanners. Yeah, that, that <laughs> giant fuzzy cat bus that you can <laughs> run in through. Like, <laughs> Every gosh. fur hair. <laughs> uh, We're going to tape off this entire bus and fumigate it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Probably. Um, and um, putting it in there because it's us, I have to. Laidback Camp is getting a Switch game. Ooh. Um, so uh, Laidback Camp is coming to, well, consoles, we, we know. Consoles. Um, and so that is, that is going to be very cool. They've uh, shown some um, potential screenshots, and it looks like it's basically like a, a visual novel, almost, of uh, the girls mm. hanging out at various campsites. Aw. Uh. Nice. Hopefully, somebody who might have an emulator of various consoles could play it and then describe it to us at some point. Um, or just put it on the consoles. I, 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 will, I will buy this full full price and, you know, absolutely. This is day one. Well, for those of us who don't have any consoles, it's kind of hard. I have just buy a console. From the thrift shop. Just, just buy it. Ah, oh, big. No big deal. I got some ancient consoles. Exactly. 2600 um, I need to play. So, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, 2600. Hell yeah. Um, I got my ColecoVision. We'll work Pong. on that. Yes. I got um, Pong. I, I got Dig Dug. Speaking of which, Dug. I was in Best Buy today, this morning. Um, they are selling um, upright game cabinets. Nice. So they had a Pac-Man cabinet. And oh, it's boy. like three-quarter size. So you, it, you, you can certainly, you know, it's, it's maybe four and a half feet, something like that. So was it like the ones we saw at the Starcade? Yes. Like in that corner where yeah. they were like little yeah. mini ones? Okay. Yeah, so cool. basically those. Um, just right there, and some of them were boxed up. They had, I think it was, they had uh, Pac-Man out, um, like all set up, and they had boxes for, I think it was Dig Dug, um, and then one or two wow. others um, there, just, you know. Set a boom. Boom. Yeah. So if you want them, they're, they're out there. Um, if you want them and you want to spend like a lot of money and play for like a half an hour and be like, yeah, yeah this the is problem. Cool. Like, <laughs> shove in the corner. <laughs> you know, if I had a basement that I could set up as mm -hmm. an arcade, I would consider doing that, mm -hmm. right? Where you go down and you actually play, you know, there, there's a space for it. But when it's like, and now where does it go? And then, mm, yeah. Eh. And it, if it was a multi cabinet, multi yeah. like mm -hmm. then I could see some where that would that be would enjoyable, be but it's yeah. like, I'm not going to play Centipede or even Dig Dug for like 15, 16 hours at a shot. I'm going to like play it for a little while and be like, yeah, I remember why this was fun. And then it's going to gather dust for several years. And then I'll come back down and be like, hey, that's right. I forgot I had this. That's what happened to me. It would yep. be a space invader. Exactly. Yeah, hey. It would be. <laughs> nice. That, that deserves it. I thought I'd give it a shot. That's, that's good. That's, that's a good one. Um, but... Uh, and this is actually a piece of news I, I, that I saw machine. last week um, that I did not mention here is that um, uh, fans have put the original Serial Experiments Lane PlayStation 1 game online. So they've ported it. Oh. It's basically a web application. You load it, you launch it up with full English translation. Oh! Wow. Yeah! Wow! That's the thing. Um, this was a two-disc PS1 game filled, and this is the other thing, filled with movie clips and audio clips. Oh, wow. <laughs> Lots of it is just listening to audio clips of various transcriptions, and they're all subtitled. Wow. So, yes, this might be a thing I will be streaming on this YouTube channel at some point. Wow. Oh, my gosh. You can actually go back and play that Serial Experiments Lane PS1 game wow. online as this fan thing. Especially because it's now basically lost media. Like, who has a... Who... who has a PlayStation 1 and one of these games in which to actually play it. I have half of the equation. Hey, there we go. Um, you, got the, you got the PS1 or you got the game? Oh, I don't have the game. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, that is the news for the week. Uh, thanks for watching. See you all next week. Beep, 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 beep. Around the globe. There we go. Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships of sea. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that is the, 